after we dropped dead yesterday yesterday afternoon after being fishing all night uh, we made a little trip already this morning like eight o'clock to Montezuma it's just it was an hour of motoring down south there you go because uh, there's no wind and it's hot as hell and we're going into Montezuma right now to get some to get our propane filled for the fridge and for the cooking yeah we haven't had breakfast yet because we ran out of propane last night and we're hot it is hot today man we're gonna try to find some AC <laughs> oh god yeah <laughs> yeah we need to do laundry huh yeah let's try to find a place to get water we've only got like 10 gallons of water left short visit to Montezuma. You can already see it in our rear mirror. Rear, mirror. rear view mirror. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, we we just we just left Montezuma and we're on our way to Jaca because they didn't have any propane in Montezuma. Um, so we're running we're running right now on our little emergency tanks for like what fifteen dollars a piece. So can't afford feeding the fridge with that thing and we we caught some fish today some mahi um, a big one we caught a big one and so we're gonna have sushi we need we need propane to boil rice so we're off to Hako and it's supposed we wanted to go there anyways it's a hopping hippie surf town right Wait a minute, before you start enjoying this episode, as you would with any of our episodes, I have a thing or two to tell you. This episode is special because it marks a turning point for us. This episode marks the moment that we completely messed up our dinghy, turned it into a complete zombie. It's more dead than alive. This is the crossroads, the climax, the apex of the dinghy debacle. For the moment being, carry on. A lot of boats here. We got like 40 or 50 of them. I see one other cruising sailboat. Tell it's a cruiser because it's got a whole bunch of crap hanging off the back of it. <laughs> Bahia Herradura. One step up from Hako. You can actually see Hako from in between. And, uh, you can see a really good wave there too. Look at that. That must be the one that people surf. Wow. Let's it's go over there. It's in the charts. It says where to go. Well, well anyway, that's Hako over there. And that's the, the famous surf spot. We're in um, Herradura. Which is, I guess, really very expensive for like rich charter fishing. So we're gonna fit it quite well. I can't wait to show up with all our laundry on the side of our boat. People are gonna love us. <laughs> yeah, they love gypsies. Nah, it doesn't look that bad. I don't care. I don't care. I hope we make it in here before dark. It's sunset right now. We got about 20 minutes left. We're cutting it close. And that's Haku down here. Look, somebody marked already the, the breaks in here. It's a left peak. Since we arrived in Haku yesterday evening, James went out on a mission to fill up the propane again because our fridge is it's running on propane red and it's leaking all over the place. Because we're out. And now I see him swimming in from the beach with the dinghy. Or being towed, to be precise, by somebody we don't know. Are you causing trouble again? Yeah. 
Hola, buenas. ¿Para qué lado? ¿Para qué lado? ¿Para qué lado? Háganlo para allá. ¿Qué haces? Muchas gracias. Buenas ah, ¡La vuelta! Sí. <risa> Muchas gracias. Buenas vidas. Buenas vidas. Buenas vidas. Muchas gracias. ¿Qué ha pasado? I got uh, water in it. I was trying to start, it wouldn't start, and then I, a wave was coming. I was, I was like beamed to it, so I was like, oh, fuck it. I jumped out and I just managed to get it, but it came over the, came over the boat and got it swamped a little. Oh, this is only the beginning. A little water over the outboard, no big deal. We, we sprayed it off, put some WD-40 on everything, and ran like new. So no, this is not it. Oh man, I'm so glad I didn't have to swim that thing back. Those guys were so nice. I didn't even see them there. They were like angels. One minute I was alone, the next minute they were like, hey, we got you, buddy. Pura vida. Pura vida. Yeah, that's a good saying. <sighs> okay. That was a workout. I just walked like a mile and a half. Like all the way down the street with that, that damn tank. I finally found a place. It was like the third the third place. There's nothing around here. There's nothing here? There is a bus though that goes right there. So you just walk, we'll just walk in, take the bus. And I talked to everybody, they said downtown Hawko is the place to go. You can take the bus for 250 Kelowna. What is there? I don't know, I haven't been there. I walked damn halfway there though. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about what's wrong with my outboard. Well, this is one thing. This should not be like this. This should be coiled up in here but the spring is broken. We still have the plastic deal here, so we just use this to kind of roll it up. It's missing the top, as you can see. We also got it underneath another dinghy and it just smashed the whole gas tank down, but it still works. This dinghy motor is a Yamaha four horsepower two-stroke. It's been under the water how many times? Eight. Eight, eight times. But the damn thing will just refuses to die. Dude, you completely jinxed that. <laughs> That's right. You should see the spark plug. So here's my spark plug. Here's the new spark plug. <laughs> you see the difference? Barely. Does anybody? This is a problem. I bet this thing is gonna run like a champ after this. All right, so I've got a new spring. Because this thing exploded and it was no more, so I don't even know how it fits in there. But. It can't be that difficult to figure out, so we're going to figure it out together. Warning, hazard statement, causes serious eye irritation. Wear protective gloves. Hmm. Okay. I don't really know exactly how this fits in here, though. Now that we have the old spring out, let's put the new spring in. Bad idea. I should have waited to unwrap this thing. Ah, come on! I need your help. Oh boy, this is gonna be crazy to put together. Oh man, this is dangerous. Do you want me to tape you while you lose your eye? Yeah, or... please. I think what you should do is put a screwdriver in here. <laughs> I don't like the part. Put it on. Okay, so we got it. I'm not doing it again. And my card just ran out right when right when I was doing that, so. Sorry, but I, <laughs> you're not seeing that. <laughs> Look at you sweating your bolts it, This is a freaking crazy job. I had to add a bolt with some little pieces of hose that I cut against the hull so it would stop leaking. I added a throttle cable, fixed the seat, um, fixed the pull start, and fixed the spring all this morning. It took two hours. Just to go diving? Just, just to go diving, and I think the visibility is going to be really I mean, I can barely see like the bottom of the rudder, so that's <laughs> three feet. <laughs> James has a problem with his knee that's been really, really uh, debilitating the last days and it seems to be very painful. So we've just been chilling. I've been editing videos 
But today we'll break the boredom and we'll go sailing because we've got we've made friends with a bar owner as always, <laughs> and we'll take him and his girlfriend out for a, for a day cruise. So Dennis, that's his name. He's been here for 18 years and he's gonna show us some surf spots today and some dive spots. That's gonna be fun. We'll go pick them up now. We have to land the dinghy on the beach. There's quite a bit of surf going on, if you can see. So, wish us luck. Everything worked out. We had to make our guests swim to the boat because the surf was too big to pick them up. For our little dinghy with our little four stroke, no, two stroke, four horses motor. But we're sailing. Hey guys. What's up? Hola. <laughs> Loving life, man. Absolutely. Living a dream. <laughs> What's happening? Apparently, uh, James James's gal is going underneath the boat to unhook the line that's caught around the prop. Thanks, job, girl. So, can you explain what you just did? Yes. I took the fishing line out of the prop, wrapped around the prop, and the rudder. Kids, we were just slow tagging. Well, somebody, yeah. somebody made a misogynistic okay. remark. Apparently, <laughs> girlfriend just uh, scolded me for, for uh, telling her to slow down a little bit and be careful, take it easy. So I am a guest here. I apologize. I don't I'll think that's exactly. The guy's fine. I'm over it. So what's happening now? The line is around the other rudder as well. Can you see how the how the rudder is being pulled? So it's around this other rudder as well. Este es el, uh, su primer día en un velero o no? Sí, es mi primera vez en un velero. Ah, oh, sí. sí. ¿Y, y, y te gusta? Sí, claro, me gusta. Me gusta muchísimo. Ah. Es no, no muy rápido a, ahora porque el viento es poco Está flojo, un poco flojo, poco, poco lento, poco, poco, flojo, poco lento, 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 poco Via Coletas, it's a deep ocean, big wave spot. And you have little Fiji, and then you have Bay Rock, which works on a on a big southwest. Dude, and you look kind of picturesque right now. And you have, with the background. And you have uh, <laughs> and you have Playa Escondida. Oh. Can, you, can you do this? Can you do this uh, while you're oh, explaining that? Yeah, and Playa Escondida <laughs> over there. Oh, cool, man. Okay, so there's no waves over here, so we can go past the rocks and then and then cut in. Yeah. 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 Cool. Good job. A nice sunset sail. We came in a little later than expected and we went out all together in Hako, which uh, turns out to be quite a party town. And this is the next day. We just arrived at the boat. The sun is going down already again. We had the worst day. We were driving in yesterday. Um, we were landing the dinghy on the beach again. But this time we were four people and it was dark and we got we got swamped big time with the dinghy and it's so messed up right now. This is the incident. And what happened was there was a ripping current going north and when we came out of Hako with the two guys, the two locals, we went north and I didn't even realize that we were going so fast but on the way back we were going against the wind and against the current and it took us forever. So by the time we got in, it was dark. We got anchored up 
And then we hop in the dinghy and I couldn't see the surf and we got hammered, almost flipped the dinghy. I yelled to everybody, get out, bail! And like one person got out, I think his girlfriend got out and we all just stayed in the dinghy and kind of rode it and it just, what happened was it picked up by the wave, it did a nose dive, the whole wave crashed down on it and then it put it in the sand and then the subsequent waves just kept picking up sand and like pressing it in the outboard and it was trashed. So the dinghy and us, we landed on the beach and we were like, oh, this wasn't that bad. But the dinghy was full of water so we couldn't move it and we couldn't flip it in a time and the waves just came on and crashed on the dinghy one after the other until we finally managed to get it out of the... We ended up having to take the motor off underwater and then pull the dinghy out. It was just yeah. a, it was, don't ever do that. That whole situation totally ruined our mood, you know. The, the dinghy owners but the people we were with were really were really nice and they were taking care of us and they they were just saying you know it's not a big deal let's just go out have fun whatever just let's just ignore the problem as good as we can and have fun in Jaco so we're like nah what the hell okay let's do that so we stayed out tonight and we stayed in a cheap ass dirty hotel but it, at least you know dirty. we had a bad we spent the whole next day on the beach trying to scramble tools together from the restaurants that are on the beach side and uh, it took us like five hours to take the, the whole thing apart get it running and we got it running we put it into the dinghy towed the dinghy through the surf and then it just would start again so we ended up having to jump back in the water and just tow the dinghy to the boat which had we just done that in the first place? <laughs> the dinghy is so messed up. Both our seats are messed up and it's super sandy. Dude, this is so messed up. When I went to pu try to pull the motor, the damn thing was seized and it, and it broke the handle. So I, this is our handle, it's a piece of rebar. <laughs> Th this is a nice motor now. <laughs> we should have, a, we should have a, uh, a drawing to see who wins this motor. Ooh, custom rebar handle. That's a designer. It's, the, it's designer gas tank. The gear, there is no gear. It's just, this just doesn't even work. So it, there's only forward. We don't even have neutral or reverse or nothing. If you're pulling, you're going. <laughs> if you're pulling, you're going. That's what, that's our motto. That, <laughs> we should do something, <laughs> our dinghy motto. <laughs> I'm glad we're not on a monohull. <laughs> Look at that thing go! Wow! <laughs> okay, back on the boat. We have our own tools. It only took like an hour for James to just clean it out again and get it running, you know, more or less. It was running, it was running. But do you think our problems are over? <sighs> this sucks. We're gonna have to take it apart right now. So, this is a long dinghy. It's like pretty far underwater. While we were focusing all our attention on the dinghy motor, we completely neglected the dinghy itself. And it was leaking like a... It had, it had ripped a bunch of the seams and we just didn't even look. Really. It leaked. It always leaked. We didn't so, realize that it was yeah, gonna leak true. that fast. <laughs> <laughs> um, I need you to get the main halyard. I'm gonna tie this around the motor and then we can haul it up by the motor. <laughs> what a pain. It's part of the game. Shit. Well, that dinghy definitely leaks bad. Yeah, it's worse than we thought it was, huh? The seam must be. Yeah, this sucks. It must have ripped one of the seams on the bottom. Yeah. <sighs> Piece of crap dinghy. I say I think we might have to get a dinghy before we get a water maker. Or we can just fix this one again, I guess. I'll fix it. I'll fix it. It's not in true Zingaro fashion, we did not consider the dinghy a complete lost case yet. Break it, bail it, fix it, sail it. There you go. That's our that's our whole thing. By the way, stay here. Let me go! By the way, these things are back on sale, so you wanna, you might wanna get one of those. Man, this thing is not made for what we're doing. We spend a lot of time fixing this engine and fixing this dinghy. Couldn't be 
any better. We saved it. So now that we got the motor out of the water, we need to rinse it off with fresh water first. Mm. Well, you, seem super excited. You, should, you should start and be like, okay, so this is what you should you should do when you if your motor's ever out of the water. Okay. So if this ever happens to you and your dinghy sinks because you got swamped and you broke it and which is probably not gonna happen to many of you folks but if ever your dinghy is under the water and it's salt water you need to rinse it off very well with fresh water. What you're gonna need is a screwdriver, flathead and a Phillips screwdriver. You need a pair of pliers and you need a wrench. It's about it. Oh yeah, and a lot of coffee. Make sure you've got somebody that makes you some coffee. And make sure you have the Costa Rican reggae tone playing in the background. This is key. So obviously make sure not to... <laughs> not to lose any of your screws. Can you give me a bowl, please? I learned some mechanic jokes from James. You want to hear them? Here, this. Half the job of a mechanic is to make. Half the job of a mechanic is to figure out how to put the thing back together. <laughs> I'm not good at telling jokes. Never mind. I'm gonna have James overdub no, no, this no, no, with no, some no, mechanic no, jokes. Half the job of a mechanic is putting it back together. And then when it's put together, make sure why it's now figure out why it's not working. Right. Figure, this, figure this out thing. where those all, all those extra parts go. Figure out where all those extra parts go. So I'm gonna try this again. Later. Throttle is disconnected successfully. Uh, the chuck as well. And there we have our carburetor. We're gonna take that apart and rinse it. Uh, now you have to have a look at the membrane right in here and see if it's wet and it's wet. So take it down to the beach, I, yeah. it, it, it mixed the water and gas again. So the reason that it's so hard to pull is because it's got compression, so when you pull it pushes on that membrane, all the air, and it pushes on that the hole for the spark plug. And it, it wants to go out, but it can't, so it's just pressurizing it. So that's why it's hard. Right now, it's really easy. It's really easy. Yeah. I see. So go ahead and just spray it in there. Now, watch. It'll come out here. Watch. See how it's coming out there? Yeah. Okay. Thank God for this weird ass seat that we have in this boat. It comes in handy if you want to use it as a working station for your iPhone. Okay, I got to take off. I learned this yesterday.
So, in conclusion, the sand got in the lower end of the dinghy and it ruined the seal. All of the oil dropped out of the lower end and it was overheating, it wasn't getting cooling. It was just, after that, it was done. Sometimes we, we were able to, you know, make it spark back up to life, but it, it was more than an illusion than any help. And it was like a .2 horse. Yeah. It was just the slowest, the most pathetic thing in the world. <laughs> it was awesome. So if you guys have noticed in all of our monologues, this big looming island behind us, we want you to guess where we are. We'll give you a hint in the form of a number. 1790. As most of you know, we're a little behind on our videos. And if you'd like to keep up to date and find out where we are and get current information and current pictures and special videos and behind the scenes, sign up to Patreon. That'll come up right here. And if you don't have the monetary means to do so, it doesn't matter. You're all good. Just make sure to like our videos and subscribe. And uh, for a little news flash at least, you can always follow us on Facebook and Instagram where we're also in real time and you'll get some pictures of our current adventures. Also, one more thing is uh, we just launched a new shirt design and the old one, which is this one. The new shirt design is actually so new that not even we have shirts yet. For the new design, we teamed up with an Australian artist, Naomi is her name, and uh, check out her artwork, absolutely incredible. She's a free diver, an ocean lover, just like us, so it felt right. And the results are just... Superb. Superb. That's it from us, and... Thanks for watching, we love you guys.